A major step in any VEX competitor's journey is when they decide to bring their robot into the world of CAD. This was never something I was able to find time to do, as I was confined to Fusion 360 for the longest time, and it was quite frustrating and time-consuming to CAD a VEX robot in Fusion. However, there is a new CAD library that promises to streamline things for Fusion CADers. I'm Caden here with Kepler Electronics, and let's take a look. First off, this isn't a Fusion tutorial per se, but rather a collection of useful tips and tricks that this library allows, and how I solve some problems catting in VEX. Now, I do have a significant amount of CAD experience, catting several combat robots and other devices at this point, so I would recommend checking out some beginner tutorials if you're new to CAD, but it's pretty simple to pick up. The library itself is quite simple to install. Simply use Fusion's upload function to upload the files for all the parts in the library. The library is primarily comprised of parts you could find directly from VEX, and while it's nice to be able to have basically every part you could ever want right in front of you, the parts library is only the half of it. This library also includes a script that allows for the easy manipulation of parts. This can be uploaded by simply going into the Tools function in Fusion, clicking on the drop-down for add-ins, and selecting Scripts and Add-ins. From there, you can select the Add-ins tab and click on the plus, which should pop open a window where you can drag in the extracted folder of the add-in. After selecting the folder, the add-in should be installed. If it isn't running already, there's an easy run button to press. The modify feature here is the star of the show, which lets you take a part and modify it into any of the commercially available variants or cut variants of structural pieces, such as a 15-hole long C-channel or any of the different variants of standoffs. This allows you to simply insert one of the part type that you need into the project and not have to juggle dozens of extra files for all the different variants of a part. In order to put this library through its paces, I decided to recreate Butternut Squash, the robot that my team built during Turning Point. I still absolutely love this robot, and I wanted to make sure I could keep it around in the realm of CAD. This robot should also prove to be a decent challenge, thanks to some parts not falling on the grid, and some strange bends in plates and strips that might prove too difficult to accurately recreate, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So I got started with the CAD by creating a new file and saving it, this allows you to use the right click and insert into project feature of Fusion. At first, I ran into a couple of issues. The first was that this 3 wide C channel wouldn't shorten with the modify feature. However, I did find from the developer that these can be fixed by jumping into the parametric features and clicking unsuppressed features on the split body function. You might not need to do this in the future after they update it, but as of the time of writing, this is still a necessary step. The next issue that I ran into was that the parts would reset when I tried to insert a new part into the assembly. This sent all the parts back to their initial positions, which was a problem. After a bit of asking around in the VEX CAD Discord, I learned that the problem was the way that I was moving parts. The library is really designed to be used with Fusion's joint system, which links parts together rather than simply moving them into position with each other. I've been used to simply pushing the parts together so they look good for renders in the past, and I'm not quite sure why this was acting differently. But if you want to still use free movement for something, you can simply press the Capture Positions button to fix it. I've been using a combination of the two methods, and the joint method is pretty easy. Simply select one face of the object, such as this standoff, and shift-click the object where you want it to move and press J. The part will move all over the place before settling down, and now it allows you to move the part to get it perfectly into position. There were a few more slightly finicky things, such as the sprockets not wanting to jump into position every time, but that was workable, and I was able to move pretty quickly. It only took probably 3 or so hours to get one side of drive catted, and that was with the learning curve of the library included. It's really, really efficient, much more so than was possible before in Fusion. Speaking of the drive pods, I had finished one side and needed to mirror it, which is when I ran into another issue. The parts that I had shortened all re-lengthened, and when I tried to fix them, the problem started throwing out all sorts of issues. Turns out, parametric features, like what we're using here to modify these parts, do not get preserved when mirroring. So I had to use rotation to get everything close, and then move the center wheel assembly down manually. While adding in the crossbeams, I figured out my preferred method for catting for VEX. Using joints for each individual screw can be quite the nightmare, requiring several button presses for each screw. So I decided to, for the screws and nuts, simply free move, which saves somewhere around 15 seconds per item. I think the joints work really well for connecting C-channel, and I think that's the perfect use case. The next major thing that I had to figure out was the bent section of the intake. This piece has a very slight curve to it, helping move the balls around and keep them in contact with the rollers, but it wasn't immediately apparent how to make that work. But I did come up with a solution. I simply converted the plate to sheet metal, which then allowed me to use the sketch line as a bend point after which I specified a 15 degree bend, which resulted in the approximate representation of the piece. Using more lines could have gotten the part closer, but one line got it close enough. However, this led into the next slight issue, which was the lack of this piece. 
This is a steel L bracket that has wide holes. These weren't in the part library, but that's understandable because I wasn't able to find them on the VEX website either. So I just approximated them in the model with the wide L beam from Cut C Channel. I guess these have been discontinued at some point, but usually they aren't gone from the website. Either way, catting this highlighted how much extra unnecessary junk was here, like these standoffs to hold the plate in place, where another L bracket standoff would have done the job just fine. It was also at this point where my computer was having some problems with the operations, likely due to the thousands of sketch points in the project. And so I decided that, for the flywheel subassembly, I'd make that inside of another file and merge them later to cut down on the time I had to spend with that many pieces. The flywheels are rather simple to CAD, but came out very nicely. After adding in the flywheels and sprockets for the pusher part of the intake, I decided to sanity check and make sure that the file would import, as I had had problems importing multi-part files into other multi-part files before. After a lot of freezing, it worked. I tried to get it into roughly the right angle, after which I disabled the view so I could add in the front two posts that hold the flywheels in place. The next interesting part of the build was the descorer arm, which I used a movable joint for. After anchoring all the parts that moved together with joints, I used a joint to connect one of the lock bars to the axle, which had a pivot already built into it thanks to the motor. Now, when I use the drive joint feature, I'm able to pivot the descorer as I want. It was at this point where I decided to tackle the ball funneling sections. Most of it was pretty simple, save for these parts here. They use multiple bends and are mounted at an angle to the chassis. The strips actually aren't in the library, or at least they don't appear to be at first. They can actually be found as part of the plate component, where you can use the modify function to trim to one hole wide. I used the sheet metal function again for the bends, doing one bend first and then the other, before mounting it using a joint so I could fine tune the angle. After doing this, I ended up going back into the bend actions in the parametric timeline and making them shallower to get the proper angles and lay. The rest of the build was pretty standard, save for the ball prevention gate, which, while I used joints to hold everything together, resulted in the gate staying stationary and the chassis rails pivoting, so I ended up just eyeballing it. The final major part of the bot was the chain. The bot has three sections of normal chain and one section of tank tread fins. My general process was the same as the process outlined by Zach from 929U in which you create a sketch that has the same general shape as the sprockets, trimming out all the interior lines. You then move a single chain link so that it lands on the sprocket, before using the pattern on path feature to duplicate the chain in the direction of the path. Check out his video in the description because it's a lot more in depth than I have time for here. This can be a very hit or miss process though, with the links jumping super far off the path sometimes. I found that double checking if there aren't any small areas you accidentally enclosed, and sometimes switching where on the path the link starts can make it work, but it still has problems around the sprockets. It was close enough that the renders would still look good as long as you weren't directly focusing on the areas where the chain was. It's important to note that this whole process was done on the Windows computer that I upgraded from a 2010 pre-built. Since the video I made on it about a year ago, I've only bumped the processor to a slightly faster variant, added a few more fans, and upgraded the storage. Even now, it's still running on a mid-tier graphics card from 2012, a mid-tier CPU from 2009, and 8 gigs of RAM. This isn't a powerful PC by any means, but aside from the freezing while doing complicated calculations, I was able to CAD the whole robot on here, while recording my screen using OBS at the same time. It did start to freeze up sometimes towards the end, but I did manage to finish it. In case you want to check out the CAD for yourself, I'll have it uploaded on my GitHub in multiple file formats so you can check it out even if you don't have Fusion. I also recorded almost the whole process, which took just over 14 hours. In case you want to watch the whole process, I have it edited down into a sort of time lapse and cut out most of the freezing. It's up on the second channel, so check that out in the description. Thanks for watching, and keep designing.